we achieved the target of 16,500 deaths per day? Have we achieved the number of deaths per day, 16,500 deaths per day? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, we are trying our best. At the moment, our capacity is about 11,500. Uh, but we are still waiting for our labs to increase the capacity. Uh, we think that we can increase until 11,500 at least uh, to date. But more importantly, we are exploring new uh, test kit. For example, the rapid test kit. There are a few companies uh, 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 providing us the test kit and then we are doing the verification in the IMR. And hopefully uh, this week or so, we can be able to uh, you know, uh, verify the test kit. But more importantly, we are also increasing our capacity. For example, in terms of the testing of the test kit, we are using a pool testing now, in terms of instead of one patient, five, patient, five samples instead of one sample, five samples straight. So we hope that we can uh, increase our efficiency in terms of the testing. And also this week, uh, BGI, uh, so we are installing the BGI in terms of uh, automated testing as well. So we hope that with the automated uh, device that we can improve our uh, PCR testing uh, within this week or so. So all in all, we are trying to increase the target of testing to 16,500. This is uh, RT-PCR. But if we, we, if we can verify uh, any rapid test kit uh, sensitivity of more than 75% to 80%, uh, then we will certainly consider that to be used at point of care, that means in the clinic, or even in a hospital. That means that you do not need to send the sample to the labs, the respective lab, and then we can actually detect more patients. Our strategy now is basically to look into mass testing, but mass testing uh, to, towards the high-risk group, mainly the targeted population. That means targeted population, what do I mean by targeted population? Basically, we look into uh, uh, those who have a public gathering, for example, uh, the or in the Tafi school, or those who have returned uh, from overseas, the returnees, for example, if they have a cluster, then we we'll probably will screen them. So these are some of the high-risk groups that we identify, and these are our priority. Is there a number of, <coughs> is there a target for the number of tests? Target, uh, first we try to achieve 16,500. That's our target for all our 43 labs public and private. So together, we work together as a team and then to increase to 16,500. Then with the rapid test kit, uh, we are looking forward for the rapid test kit. So if uh, uh, we do have a reliable, accurate uh, rapid test kit, then we hope that to increase to more than 20,000. Is that target for total number of tests, like maybe 100,000 people? Uh, it's possible. Once we can do 20,000 a day, for example, certainly in that five days, we can actually detect 100,000. Uh, but 100,000, instead of uh, looking into uh, mass uh, in the public, we are looking into the focus group, so the high-risk group. So we're targeting the high-risk group first, uh, because we realize that uh, even within uh, our population, uh, certainly uh, if we to maximize or optimize our resources, the limited resources that we have, it's best that we target the high-risk group across the country. Like South Korea, we have like, uh, they are testing uh, 8,500 people per million. Ours is 1,600. So do we have like a benchmark how much you think we want to improve to? Yeah, the most important is that the indicators for us to test, if you, as I mentioned yesterday as well, if you look in the WHO indication, the benchmark, if you detect many patient positive, that means there are many more out there not being tested. So the benchmark is that every 10 negative, there's one positive, which means it's about 10%. So our testing, if you look into our total testing, is about uh, 7 to eight, uh, seven to 9%, minus the pending probably is the 9%. So we, within the range of WHO or 10%. That shows that we are picking up the cases. But more importantly is to target the patients or the high-risk group, uh, which means across the country, if we can target the high-risk group, and we are working closely with the PDRM, and they're helping us to localize, uh, trace them, and track them. And once we are able to trace and track them, uh, bring them to the hospital, we will test them. If they are positive, we will isolate them and treat them. If they are negative, we will basically uh, put them on a close uh, self-quarantine.
Uh, there was a delay before, but now because of the new 14 labs now, we have a new 14 labs from the university, we hope that we can share the workload and then clear up the uh, pending cases. Uh. So, and also the, the other factor is because when can, pending cases, the report is uh, 12 noon, because every, 12, every day 12 noon, that's the report. So if you, have your, if you have your test done that day, for example, at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, so definitely the result will be pending, so it will carry forward. So, and sometimes it's not 24 hours, it's more than 48 hours. So that's the reason why the accumulation of the 8,000 pending cases. But uh, if what we sh should do is to find a test that is a short turnaround time. Probably you can diagnose uh, within 30 minutes or one hour. That's number one. Second, in terms of the transport, you know, point of care testing, rather than sending a specimen, because you take time to send the specimen to the lab. So that is two. Three is that we can increase the capacity of our lab. This is what we are doing in terms of uh, si single sample. Now we have a pool, five uh, samples and then straight away we do it. Uh, so that is, again, adjustment that we have to make to optimise our lab. So the most important and crucial at the moment is to enhance our lab services. Uh, we have increased the volume in terms of, uh, 40, uh, we started with uh, only uh, 23 labs, but now we have 43 and uh, five more labs are coming. Uh, so we're in the process of procurement and we hope that in the next couple of, next week, uh, we can actually increase the lab uh, capacity, uh, new lab probably in Tawau, Sandakan and Miri, and uh, another a few labs from the university as well. So if we can increase the number of labs, it's important. Second is the capacity. Sometimes we have the lab, but we have not pushed the capacity up. For example, for the last uh, few days, it was actually uh, just uh, a teething problems and then try to look into how we can, uh, and uh, uh, what you call it, start the lab going in the university. So uh, with about 14 labs, we only started, uh, we only uh, did about 380 labs, uh, test sample. So that's just the beginning for them to warm up before they can actually increase the capacity to maybe 200 a day. So if uh, 14 labs is uh, 200 a day, then probably we are looking at 2,800 uh, tests uh, available. So I think that capacity-wise, we need to share across public and private and also uh, the university working together as one. Can we get a breakdown of the share of uh, public, uh, uh, government and private? Yeah, so 43 labs I mentioned. Uh, we have 14 labs in the hospital. That is uh, additional new labs were uh, in uh, uh, Cebu as well as in the hospital Queen Elizabeth. So we have 14 labs. I'm R1 and then we have uh, MKAK, Makmah Kesihatan Awam, uh, 5. So all in all, 20. We have 7 private labs. Then we have one Angkatan Tentera, one Malaysian Genomes Institute, and then we have 14 from the University IPT and IPTS, total of 43. Capacity, as I said, if we can push the capacity, we can uh, achieve at least uh, 16,000. But 16,000 is still not enough. We need to look into rapid test kit, antigen rapid test kit, not the antibody test kit.